them, but we start uh, with a big uh, picture view. Jalen, what do you think the impact of this blockbuster trade that changes these four teams will have on the league as a whole, especially putting all those superstars in Brooklyn on the Nets? This is outstanding for the league that I love so very much, Jacoby. Look at the amazing star power that now exists in the Eastern Conference. Mm. Okay. One thing for Russ to now go to the Wizards and they're struggling, but look at the top of the East. Each of those teams feel like they should win the conference or this season is a failure. The Miami Heat still have Jimmy, still have Bam. The Boston Celtics have Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown. And how about the Bucks? Not only do they still have Giannis, he signed Jacoby for the next handful of years. It literally just stabilized the conference that has been a revolving door that we talked about the last couple of years. They saw Kawhi parachute in, the Miami Heat take it last year, Giannis was the regular season MVP twice, and then all of a sudden, they got bounced. Philadelphia needed to make change. They have Embiid. They have Ben Simmons. So much star power in that conference is going to be fantastic theater for the league. Well, one thing that this Brooklyn Nets team is what you just mentioned, star power. All day, ever since the trade, everyone has been trying to wrap their head around what Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and James Harden look like on the same team. However, you can't forget that Kyrie Irving is out for personal reasons, likely to be out for protocol reasons for a few games after that. He's not necessarily on this team that James Harden has just been added to. How does this move change where Kyrie Irving's head is at right now and will it draw him out from his absence? Well, um, I know he really loves basketball mm -hmm. and he's shown me to be a fantastic performer. If he's going to ever play, this is tailor-made red carpet situation. I don't see him walking away from this, Jacoby. Remember, he was the first guy to sign. He was almost like the lead domino in theory that brought Kyrie. I mean, that brought KD. And shout to Kiwi, their GM, Sean Marks, my former teammate. Also, Steve Nash and Mike D'Antoni. This is going to be their seven seconds or less. And the remix with Amari Stoudemire on the sideline. Kyrie Irving is going to be a vital part of that. I anticipate at some point he will be back in uniform and give us this outstanding big three. One that reminds me of a remix of when we saw LeBron James join Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh in Miami. So on Kyrie specifically, here are some rumors slash reports that we have heard lately. He left for personal reasons that might have something to do with the insurrection in the Capitol that he didn't necessarily love the idea that Steve Nash was hired as the head coach, and most recently that him and KD haven't really been seeing eye to eye or discussing that much over the past few days. How do those things change with the addition of James Harden? Because basketball is what they do for a living. And Kyrie Irving is so very young and got so much more to give to the game and or vice versa. I just think that he'll find a way to figure it out because this situation is tailor-made, Jacoby. And how about some of the outstanding players that each of these guys have had a chance to play with in their careers? Kevin Durant has played with Russ and the Splash Brothers. Kyrie Irving played with LeBron James. James Harden had multiple great players, including Chris Paul and Russell Westbrook come through Houston. And so, this is AAU in the NBA reincarnated. And as somebody that loves AAU basketball, I always stand on the table when people try to slander it. And why that analogy matters, Jacoby, is you're the best player on your squad. You're all city, you're all state or whatever. But then when the season is, you go play with the best players in the state to go play against the other best players in the country. So all of these guys have relationships. Jeff Green, DeAndre Jordan, and in a team sport, that bond is going to matter. That bond is going to matter. Yep. And what the Nets are going to do, Mike D'Antoni, who I played for, is going to write 125 up on the board.
That's how many they're going to be trying to score each game. Right now, the Bucks lead the league in score, and the Nets are currently third. And they just added James Harden, a guy that can get you 40-point triple doubles, to go with Kevin Durant, a 50-40-90 guy, Iceberg Slim, shooting trade from the suburbs, and Kyrie Irving, I was in the gym when he made the jumper on the right wing against the Golden State Warriors. All of these guys on the same squad in the East, and that basketball intellect and versatility that each one of those guys have, oh man, this this is this is gonna be spectacular to watch. I'm glad you brought up the relationships between these three human beings because this is not an arranged marriage. Remember, there are reports this summer that these three were working out in Los Angeles together and said, you know what be nice? Be nice if we all end up on the same team. And somehow, some way, they ended up on the Nets. So let's look at this through the prism of Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant came back from Achilles. He's looking like the old Kevin Durant. How does he feel when he hears this <laughs> news? It speaks for itself like Ice Cube, like mama cooked the breakfast with no hog. He's a made man, dog. And the Nets did an amazing job of eliminating any talk of what might happen with KD's free agency. Because he ain't about to leave running with James Harden and Kyrie Irving. This is an opportunity, Jacoby. You remember when LeBron joined the Heat and they did the press conference, not five, not six, not seven? Of course. And each time I always bring up to me, if he would have got to that, he would have surpassed Michael Jordan in the GOAT conversation. Leaving that, he had to go to LA and rebuild it. So now for these guys, do they get more than two championships like that big three did? It also, it shapes the balance of power. You have the conglomerate called LeBron James and Anthony Davis, Kawhi mm -hmm. Leonard and Paul George in LA on the West Coast and another group of amazing teams. And then now you have a squad that a lot of people are gonna be considering uh, uh, villains in, in, in theory. I'm pretty sure people in Houston are not happy with James Harden. They're gonna be happy to get those picks and they're gonna be happy with what goes on with their team. But when you talked about that arranged marriage, that means somebody else had to, uh, I guess, be the broken eggs hour. You have the conglomerate called LeBron James and Anthony Davis, Kawhi mm -hmm. Leonard and Paul George in LA on the West Coast and another group of amazing teams. And then now you have a squad that a lot of people are gonna be considering uh, uh, villains in, in, in theory. I'm pretty sure people in Houston are not happy with James Harden. They're going to be happy to get those picks, and they're going to be happy with what goes on with their team. But when you talk about that arranged marriage, that means somebody else had to, uh, I guess, beat a broken eggs in order to get that omelet made. And that was the fans of Houston. And so with the Nets, this is a terrific opportunity for KD to now catapult himself into these top 10 conversations. And is he going to surpass some certain great players on these all-time lists? And if you remember, it just seemed like a few months ago, is because it was, the Heat won the Eastern Conference and the Lakers won the championship. And it seemed like the rest of the teams in the Eastern Conference were like Scarface. They're like, okay, I'm reloading. You saw what the Bucks <laughs> did to win out to assist Giannis after they signed Giannis. You saw the Sixers reshape their roster to add more shooting and then get rid of Horford. And now you see this from the Nets. So right now, after this, assuming Kyrie Irving does play professional basketball this season, who do you have coming out of the East to take on the Western Conference champion in the finals. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be consistent here. I'm not gonna fall into the Clippers trap that I fell into last year. I okay. remember when LeBron first went to Miami, and I'm saying this before the NFL playoffs end. Same thing for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You put together this great talent, you don't necessarily get it done in the first year. Mm -hmm. Now, I know they have unique chemistry. This is extreme unique chemistry though because they're elite players that also have been working out together. They played together before Harden and KD uh, in OKC. They, they, they got a chance to get acclimated earlier in the season in KD and Kyrie. So it's just not like they're shotgunning them together. But there's something to be said for that cohesion, in my opinion, that the Bucks have built over the last couple of years. And you add Drew Holiday, who's going to be an all-star this year. Chris Middleton, for anybody that's still doubting his game, I don't know what you've been watching. 
you go pull up the game of how he performed last year without Giannis in the playoffs. And that cohesion to me is going to be something that is going to be tough for the Nets to overcome. And lastly, let me tell you what else is going to be hard for them to overcome. That productive height that the Bucks have. So now mm -hmm. you got DeAndre Jordan. He about to be catching blobs with all both hands. Look, look, oh, you know what I just saw? That's DeAndre Jordan hanging on the rim again. You know, all right, Kyrie five pick and rolls, Harden five pick and rolls, DeAndre pop, pick, whatever. Okay. These Nets are going to be outstanding, Jacoby. I can't wait to see the show. Jalen, you make a good point about the Bucks' consistency, the Bucks being on the pre precipice in the playoffs and not advancing. And there, it seems like they're ripe to win this Eastern Conference. They'll likely have the best record in the Eastern Conference. And I'm... Oh, wait, I am. I'm going to do the thing where I fall for the hot new thing in the conference. I think when you have James Harden, Kyrie Irving, KD, and then you've got Joe Harris with the cat and shoot threes, you've got DeAndre Jordan rim protecting and catching the lobs you mentioned, this to me is the favorite to win the East. These Brooklyn Nets, it, it, it's not even close to me. You know what? And we're going to talk about their defense. They're not going to play defense. They're going to play lots and lots and lots of offense. And I would pick these Nets to win the Eastern Conference right now as we sit here today. That is my favorite for sure. You know, if I was writing a script, I would want all of the drama. Stephen sure. King style, dog. So, of course, the Nets and the Lakers, KD, LeBron, AD, Kyrie, Harden, like the Lakers so brand. Of course, so that would be outstanding for the NBA. But Milwaukee, Jaylen. I got y'all. Milwaukee, Jaylen. I got y'all. Jalen, Jalen, it's a big news on a day like today. There's a lot of always a lot of eyeballs on the show, especially in those executive corner offices around the Disney Corporation. So please, don't get us fired. And now, the don't get fired topic of the day. Houston lost James Harden and Rockets fans are sad, but there's also a ripple effect in the city of Houston. It was pointed out by Slim Thug on Instagram when he put up this meme Thugga. with featuring Houston's own Travis Scott, liked by James Harden, about the <laughs> anguish felt around the exotic dancers in the Houston area. Do not get us fired and be brief. Why would James Harden like this Instagram post? I got you, Houston. I got you, Houston. You know what I'm saying? James Harden did an amazing job of stimulating that economy, Jacoby, for mm -hmm. years, giving back mm -hmm. to the community, the kind of charity that makes it to the 